Hi there, folks, and welcome to TV Tuners, a television podcast for the true fanatics. It's a weekly dive into the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson. With me, as always, is the Ross to my Chandler, Stairmaster. I'm here. And, of course, as always, our other co-host, the Joey to my Chandler, Keo Ray. Hello. Is that good? Sure. <gasps> Get a spinoff. Hold on. Wait. They made a spinoff to Friends? Yeah, Joey. <laughs> can't just co- okay yeah, yeah you can call yeah. it that how That's you boys what... doing this week oh good yeah. i finished all my not so good i finished all my classes for the semester I'm... my arm hurts i'm proud of you <laughs> Kia, why is your why is your arm hurt uh there's like a nail i kind of stabbed through it like all the probably... way yeah should probably do something about that mm no. Is it like an iron nail? Yeah, it's rusty. Is oh. it like a nine inch nail? Yes. Nice. I don't get why that's it's nice. Actually, it's really it's really not nice, but so we talk about television? Sometimes. Did we watch any television this week? Sometimes. Anyway, it's a busy week this guy. It's a busy week because like last week, the Television Critics Association's press tour is happening still. Have the critics decided on anything yet? Well, they did do their annual TCA awards, which uh was a thing. How oh, did anyone Uh the Americans won a bunch of awards because it was their yeah. last season, so uh, the main thing that I wanted to talk about regarding the TCA awards was that they gave out the Heritage Awards. Which is like their uh, Hall of Fame, I guess. Sort of like the this is a this is a show that means a lot to the the the, the work the world of television. Like the Simpsons have won sixty minutes, you know. They've won the sixty Wing. minutes. Sixty minutes is one. Uh, uh, the Wire, Mash, those kind of shows. Uh, anyway, this year uh, Friends got in, which is why uh, I did that little intro in the beginning. Ah. Mm. Uh. Is this symbolic of our destruction? Sure. I don't know. It's fine, I guess. Kia, what's your strongest... Friends is a big deal to some people. Kia, what's your strongest friend's memory? Um... I don't really have one because friends has failed to leave a lasting impression on me. Oh, all I know about is the morning... With this song. The song. Are you talking about? Are you talking about mornings here? Mornings here. Yeah. The mornings here. The sky's clear. Get into gear. The beer. The mornings here. The dark yeah, that was good. night has disappeared. Cut his mic, Swanson. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love Friends. <laughs> I I don't actually. Friends is fine. It's a fine show. It's just not something I personally watch what uh but kia you don't remember like classic friends moments like the time chandler and joey had a bunch of uh baby ducks nope or that time that at all that time where ross was like it's a break i wasn't there for that ross was like give me a break and rachel handed him a kit kat Man, I've missed a lot of friends, didn't I? Oh, I saw yeah, the clip time. where I saw the clip where like Chandler went to UFC and bought Tank a bot. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> and he won. Well. He won somehow. <laughs> Wait, did he? No, he he got beat up. Yeah, I thought so. That'll teach him. Remember that time where Phoebe uh, sang that song and she was like, "This cat smells bad." That was a good time. No. Nope, I don't remember that at all. You remember that time where like Joey was uh, was an ass double for Al Pacino? That That's actually, that actually for somebody who does somebody who doesn't like Friends, you've sure seen a lot of it. I've got a lot more memories of ER because my parents when I was a kid a lot. Oh yeah, sure some ER memories for us. Uh, one time a guy's arm got chopped off by a helicopter. Another mm, time nice. a guy got like shot at a shooting range. Mm. Mm, they seem pretty boring, Stare. Another time? One seems more common than the other. <laughs> Another time, this guy had cancer, so he was hanging out with his daughter and his house by the summer house by the lake. 
And I think he helped her learn to drive? In the emergency room? No, no. His lake house. He had cancer, so I don't think he was working at the hospital anymore. Oh, yeah. Remember that part in Friends where Ross had cancer? <laughs> that was sad. I cried. Yeah. Very bold of them to do that. Remember that time in Friends where the black guy showed up? No. Nope. Yeah, I think happen. you're making that up, Swanson. Well, the it morning guy was black. The only black guy in all of Friends. Oh, actually, I think Aisha Tyler showed up one episode. Yeah, uh, Ross dates uh, Aisha Tyler for like half a season. Wow. And then he goes back to Rachel or something. I don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah, Friends won the Heritage Award, which I thought was interesting. It now joins the hollowed halls of All in the Family, MASH, The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Saturday Night Live, you know, classics. Seinfeld. The Mary Popovich Show. Uh, that's not on there yet. Oh. Dragon Ball Z. Yes. Yes, that's on there. Of course, that was inducted the first year along with The Simpsons. Mm. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. You guys watch anything interesting this week? No, oh, I watched Fits of Legends. Is that uh It's great. Were... There's like four I'm... dislocations in the first five minutes. That's what you want from a Kung Fu movie. I suppose that's what that is. Yeah. Nice. Well, what did you think it was? This oh, movie title Fist of Lozenge, starring Jet Li. Fist of Lozenge? Help. Is that, what you, is that what you said that was? Fist of Lozenge? I got a numb arm. The Fist of Kenny Loggins. <laughs> yes. I'd watch, I'd watch that movie. I don't think Kenny Loggins could fight very well. No, but he could tell you when you're uh, making a hit song. I guess that uh, is something you could do. Anyway, I finished up the second season of American Crime Story. Oh, so who did it? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure if Danger Zone started playing, Kenny Loggins would win any fight in the area. <laughs> Do you think he, it's like he hulks up when Danger Zone pl- starts playing? Yeah, exactly. Like it, either that, or you get like insane acrobatics or something like that. So he he develops Ultra Instinct. Yeah, it's sort one of, of the two. It's sort of it's sort of like a warning when Highway to the Danger Zone. You, when you hear when you hear that start playing, then you know that you're you're messed. You, you can't win. It turns out that Kenny Loggins was the Danger Zone. It's a twist that no one sees coming. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Andrew Cunanan did it, Stairmaster. You find that out in the first episode. Oh, well, shame on him. Well, he he killed himself, so yeah. Oh, yes, justice is served. Okay, Kia, what did you watch? Oh, I've been watching you, Stairmaster. Uh, did I do anything interesting? No. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a bad choice. Did you watch it? I mean, it might be interesting how you drank that entire gallon of milk and then, like, just sat there and cried afterwards, but... Well, it was very unpleasant. My fridge broke well, down, and I didn't want to waste any food products. But then after the milk, I couldn't really find any room for any. Okay, well, I mean, that's that's some kind of decision-making process you went through there. Uh, what would you have done? I would have just not worried about the spoilage. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, m- yeah, Keo, milk doesn't, like, grow on trees. Not all of us are, like... Got the goose that lays the golden egg. The milk egg. Okay, I'm just saying I, I wouldn't I wouldn't drink an entire gallon of milk and then cry afterward just to save a couple of dollars. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to cry when I decided to do it. It was just very physically unpleasant. Yeah, people don't I'm... decide. People usually don't decide to cry when they do something. Okay, you, you could have known halfway through that if you kept going, you were probably going to cry. I thought I might vomit. But I forced that down. And I had a sense of duty, Keo. Gross. No. I mean, I think I think drinking half of the milk would have been just fine. You don't get it, Keo. I bought that gallon of milk just today. It was completely unopened. I couldn't... You don't get it. I, I really don't get it, because the refrigerator can stay cold for quite a while, even with the power out, and the uh, milk probably would have been fine. Well, I guess you do raise a fair point there. 
Stair just loves milk. I need it for my calcium. So I can have unbreakable bones. I don't think that's how milk works. Keo, hit me with that chair. All right. Keo, you don't just have to sit do what he says. Come on, do it right in my back. Uh, this, is, this isn't going to end well. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, God, all my skin and muscles. Oh, they just flew off. <laughs> His oh, back no. is completely exposed. Don't Ooh, yeah! Take that! <laughs> ah! Keo Rain is jacked. Look at him. He's hulking up. Oh no! That was the biggest rush of my life. Look! Look at him! Oh god! Is that playing for me or Keo? It's playing for me. Oh yeah, I can't really move my limbs right now. I'm just gonna be quiet for the rest of the podcast. Here's there. Take this sensu bean. <laughs> wow. Wow, I'm stronger than ever now. <laughs> I have, hope you don't beat me up. Have I become the Super Saiyan? No. Oh. Alright, so let's move on to some news. Guys, we got a story. You ready for this one? No. You remember, I hope so. You remember I don't the, know what it is, so I don't know if I'm ready or not, Swanson. What, what is it supposed to be like to be ready for? Um, I, uh, you're bracing yourself, I guess. Oh, so we should prepare for the worst. Yeah. You remember 2006? That was an alright year. No, it wasn't. It was okay. You know, uh, you know. What came out 2006? Sonic 2006. Oh no! Oh yeah, both of those came out. (laughs) Dick Cheney, that was the year Dick Cheney shot his friend. But also, there was a song hitting the airwaves that everyone loved. It was called "Hey There, Delilah." Go on. You guys remember this song? Oh, I do not like that song. Hey there, Delilah. Swanson, uh, every t- every time I hear that song, I cringe. Yeah, uh, and yet, and all of America cringed along with the plain white tees as they soared to number one that year. Uh, I feel like I don't think. Yeah, that was on commercials all the time. Yeah, it was on the radio every day. It was a lot. Uh, I was it ironic. Maybe. Maybe you guys want to hear something real embarrassing? I bought the album. Oh my God, Swanson! Yeah, it was. It wasn't great. Uh, what was your thought process? I was like, this song speaks to me. I, oh man! Maybe Swanson. if I play this on a boombox, she'll finally have sex with me. Turns out, no and no. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Plain White Tees, uh, since then, I don't know what they've been up to, but what they just did this past week is uh, sell the rights to that song for a TV show. Like, like for the theme song? Like, the, the just the song. The song I, has been crafted into a, a scripted dramedy based on the song itself. As I've well got the, some questions. How much would you pay for that? And how much would you sell for that? Well, it doesn't like, reveal that pricing details, but they are, in, they are they do seem to be involved as like producers in the process of making this show. Uh, okay, so... So there's not really much to work with with this song, I don't think. Well, yeah, let's let's take let's break it down, all right? Let's talk about what this song does to you. <laughs> oh, what it does to me? Yes. What oh, what does it do to you? Okay, so there's a girl in New York and a guy in LA? Ch- sure? I don't know. Uh, there are the there's girls in distance. New York, I don't know where the guy is. Yeah, there's distance between them. Oh. So it's been like one week since she looked at him? Yeah, it's been, yes. So Delilah moved away to New York, and this guy misses her and is writing a song about her. And I think I think that's pretty much it, right? You know what the worst part of that song is? There's no comma. There should be, it should be, hey there, comma, Delilah. <laughs> so It's just, hey there, Delilah. <laughs> Wait, are you saying that the singer should be like, hey there, comma, Delilah? No, I just no, mean I in mean, the it, song title, there should be a comma. Oh. That's a lot more pedantic. Uh, it's grammatically incorrect, Stare. 
I don't think you need to be grammatically correct if you make a lot of money. And they sure they sure did, which is probably uh, why they're presumably. they're cashing into the song that everyone knows from them, not like some other song they made a decade I later. Is it is it even cashing in at this point when like nobody listened to this song anymore? It seems like they're scratching for. I don't nostalgia? Ha- I don't have a colloquialism for this. I thought I did. Are people are people nostalgic for this song? I don't, I don't think I don't remember anybody who's like uh, who thinks back fondly on this song. I mean, maybe if you're or this year even. Maybe if you were like in high school in two thousand, which we all were. Sorry to make anybody in this who's listening to this holds older than us feel old, but What's we were all even? in high school. <laughs> yes, we were all in high school. Well, no, I guess we were in middle yeah, school. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, 2008 was when we... So when now we just made people feel even older. Ow, my head hurts. <laughs> Is this death coming for me? Not for you. Uh, not yet. Anyway, this, uh, this press release says, Hey There Delilah is a perfect example of an iconic story song that has introduced characters and a premise to a massive, multi-generational audience and is begging... Okay, so the premise is two people are far apart from each other? That's the premise, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And characters, too. Don't forget the characters, like Delilah and Songwriter. Boy! <laughs> Boy. And is must begging chase to be, after her. And is begging to be expanded into a full-length story for contemporary television audiences. Okay, so is this going to end with begging. him racing to... Is this going to end with him racing to the airport? That's the first episode. Oh, where do you go from there? Oh no! Uh, yeah, I... it's probably you know what? It's probably a Netflix show where it's ten it's ten episodes long, and uh, the tenth episode is when he races to the airport. No, 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 no! Episode eight, he races to the airport. Episode nine, he hijacks a plane. Dang! I mean, why is he racing to the airport? She's already gone when the song takes place. Yeah, that's what that's what he that's what happens. He's racing to the airport to get on the plane. And so he has to hijack another plane to chase after her. All right, but this is apparently begging to be adapted. Begging. I was on my I was on my knees for this. What? Well, what is the marketing point of making such a bold lie? Is it just like a required symbolic I, I, gesture I, at this point? I think it might just be the pitch that they made for the show, and then they just said, "Okay, the pitch can also just be the, the marketing as well." Oh. I mean, look, this is an iconic song, obviously. Everyone knows uh, such classic lines as, you'll know it's all because of you, we can do whatever we want to. <laughs> uh, that's just a great rhyme. I don't think anybody knows any lines besides the chorus. Maybe they'll play with that. Maybe she's doing something bad to them. A thousand miles seems pretty far, but they've got planes and trains <laughs> and cars. <laughs> I love that he's, yeah, I love that he just lists it out for you. Planes, trains, cars. If only there was a movie about trying to get across it. Yeah, unfortunately there isn't until Hey There Delilah returns to our, to grace us with its presence. Is the theme song going to be the song or are they going to make a new one? <laughs> that would kind of be... What if it's about a guy who just always sings a situation? I'm on the bus right now, and while it's really shitty, <laughs> I think this homeless guy is beating off. Yeah, I think he wants to cough. Oh, there he goes shooting ropes. There he goes shooting ropes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know much about homeless people publicly covert about it. I don't know if you know Maybe much not. about masturbating. <laughs> That's true. I've never felt sexual desire in my life. I am free of all sin. Uh, Are you our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Yes. Whoa. Nice. What a revelation. I have five new commandments for this era. Oh, oh, let's hear them. Marriage is to be abolished. I will take on all of your wives for myself. Whoa, this is my, whoa. This will be my new cross to bear. This seems I- interesting. <laughs> I thought you. I thought you just said you you had no desire, but now you're wanting every wife. This is an obligation, Keo, a duty. Okay. Number two, no we rock and roll, we... especially no emo slash folk punk songs. Hmm. Oh, okay. This is getting a little intense. This sounds a little intense for certain bands. 
Anyone who is found possessing a copy of Hey There Delilah must have their hand, right hand chopped off. Oh, shit. Good thing I lost my CD case years ago. Number three, no shellfish. I've decided that that was a bad idea and let you guys start eating it. Also, you're definitely on four. <laughs> Number five, no biting. No, uh, uh, no biting No what? biting, like... <laughs> do, do not bite your fellow man. Oh, okay. Oh. Hey, thanks for the clarification. Jeez. S? Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's still going to be pretty inconvenient, but when, it's a lot better than not biting food. When would you need to bite your fellow man? Uh, I mean, you don't need to. What if you're having a tussle? That is a sin. He will cut off his arm. To tussle? <laughs> Let he use without the sin. Tussle. Yeah, yeah. You, you, so you just gotta give you? me a sword to cut it off with. I can't just like cut it off without an, any tool to do it with. I'm sorry, I can't turn things into sword. Hmm. Yeah, you, yeah. This is you're a fraud. <laughs> oh no! Please don't run me out of town. You're getting so run out of town. Let's, I'm telling the mayor and everything. Let's stone this boy. No. I'm gonna throw a brick. At his leg. <laughs> That's the worst place to be hit with a brick. Brick his legs, Keo. Brick him. Yeah, I will once we get bricks. Oh, man. I'm just imagining, like, you know how in the, in the witch hunts, they put rocks on you until you died? What if they, we brought that back and just did it with bricks instead? Wait, is that different than stoning? Like, they just put rocks on you? Yeah, they would crush you to death under them. As opposed to stoning where they throw rocks at you. That's pretty awful. Yeah. Haven't you ever read, uh, what's it called? Oh, yeah, of course. Fuck. How could I forget and it? This is TV tuners, not reading Yeah, let's forget tuners. it. We don't need any high, we don't need any literature. All right. So, it's time for a new segment on the show. A segment all about our favorite co-host. Keo Rain. Is, is it me? Yes. It's Keo Rain's Crackdown. Hit the theme, stare. da 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 Okay, so here's what I'm pretty upset about right now. I'm currently out of paper towels. I've got none left. None. None? I don't have any paper towels left. I can't, like, I can't wipe things off. I can't clean up spills. It's just Use toilet this is ridiculous. Paper. Have you considered cleaning up spills with your mouth? Okay, for one thing, that's disgusting, Swanson, and also toilet paper. Are you kidding me? It's better than nothing. That leaves like little specks everywhere. That's horrible. Get more toilet paper. Get more paper towels. Why can't you just go get paper towels, Key Ray? Why? Okay, here's a better question, Swanson. Why don't you bring me more paper towels? Well, we huh? We live on different coasts, so that would seem imp- that would be nearly impossible. Nearly impossible. That's a thousand miles apart. From you too. Yeah, but tonight you look so pretty, Kiore. See, you're not really helping your case by saying that it's almost impossible. You you should just say yeah, that it's impossible. Watson, there's cars, planes, and trains. Yeah, but I called you Other pretty, things. so shouldn't that stand for something? Uh, it was very flattering, but you failed to call me girl, so I I don't like it. Kiyo is cute, cute. <laughs> It's fine. Keo Rain doesn't pl- doesn't go with the rhyme scheme of Delilah any- or the uh, phonic sound of Delilah anyway. Mm. Yeah, so go ahead and bring me those paper towels and I'll be fine, Swanson. I mean, we could order you some on Amazon, I guess. Oh no, that would be unwoke. Yeah, Amazon's no good. You gotta bring them to me on foot. Mm. Swanson, you have 24 hours. I don't think that's enough time. And if you don't like it, Swanson, it is enough time, actually. You shouldn't have given me a crackdown, because this is how it's going to work from now on. I'm doing the mental math. That's enough time if you don't sleep. What, do I have to do? Do I have to be like that lady astronaut and just, like, wear a diaper? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can stop for a bathroom break. Oh, God, that'd be terrible. I'm not the... I'm sorry. I'm sorry this fate has happened to you, Keith Swanson. All right, Keo. Well, you're going to get your paper towels, but... You're also going to have to change my diaper afterwards. Swanson's going to pass uh, out on a highway. 
No, no, I'm not changing any diapers. And also, Swanson, guess what I've got here? You, you, see, you see, you see this? I see it. I don't. I don't see that. It's a really ominous hourglass. Well, That's I mean, gonna run out before 24 hours, probably. Yeah, you're gonna need a lot more of those. Okay, I I guess I'll like. Well, you'll need. I like ti- I, I like I like do it like more than one time and count them. Or maybe you could just get twenty four of them and pour the sand into one of them. If I have the one big one, wouldn't it have the sand already? Oh yeah, that makes. All right, Swanson, you have you have extra time because I need to go find a bigger hourglass. Let's give them a nice. week. Come on. Uh, all right, that's fine. Ha, also, deal. Also, also, now I, I can lounge look- around for six days. Also, I looked it up, and I was thinking of The Crucible. The 1953 play. Which they made- Did it have a TV show? Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, oh okay. So oh. it's worthy of being talked about. And also I had, like, three separate films. Or, or three. It's a pretty big deal, apparently. All right, well, that's been Keoran's crack, though. All right, so... There's some other things we watched. Not television shows, but, you know, those things that sort of promote television shows. They were supposed to make you want to watch a television show? Yeah, some of them work like that. Some of them Dude, don't. Do we watch a billboard? Yes. No, Keo Rain. We watched a trailer. This is Trailer Blazers. Hit the theme, Keo Rain. I feel nice. like that's a different theme. <laughs> Uh, the first trailer we watched was called One Dollar. Uh, it's a CBS All Access show coming sometime in the future. So you can watch it for less than one dollar. Uh, more than one. Much more than one dollar. <laughs> oh. How's it All Access if it's so expensive? Yeah, you would think they would say it's all... You would think they would make a streaming service not name it All Access when you have to pay money to get to it. But... Rich only. <laughs> that's that should be the name of it. Uh, who's got time to pay ten dollars for CVS's streaming service? It might be less than that. I don't remember. One dollar is uh, set is set in a small Rust Belt town where one dollar has an effect on a bunch of things. It doesn't really become clear what this entire what this show is about in this thirty second trailer. A- it's just like, oh, some murders happened. Come watch this show because, you know, murder is really interesting. Like, it never tells you what the name $1 is from. The premise says that it's from because a dollar bill connects a bunch of people to this shocking multiple murder. They don't really I assume they're passing it around. Up. Like, they're changing it for goods or services. Yeah. There's a shot of some gloves hanging from a tree and they're covered in juice, I, imp- I imagine. Couldn't be something anything else. Yeah, they were farmers' gloves, and I'm I, I'm assuming like he, the farmer was just picking some really juicy berries and got a bunch of red juice on them, and then he hung them up to to like dry, you know, dry. Yeah, what else would you hang? Why else would there be bl- gloves hanging from a tree dripping with red viscous fluid? Maybe he was picking tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. Very very red insides of those tomatoes. Well, like I mean, it deep is, crimson tomatoes. They're probably genetically modified. Yeah, it's makes true. sense. It's the only way you can compete in today's market. Anyway, yeah, I don't really know what the point of that shot of like bloody gloves hanging from a tree was. Is was it was it supposed to be like an interesting shot? Because it wasn't. It was just like, oh yeah, there's some gloves. Like what? It's... If that's supposed to be like consequence of a murder, why would they be there anyway? What sort maybe of... they're uh, maybe they're a sign, a warning, a warning. Don't. Don't, don't mess be, with the don't mess with the the gloves or you get the horns. Don't be murdered. Far, f- farmers keep out. <laughs> keep out of this rust belt town. <laughs> farmers are staying in their territory. Oh man, maybe the Amish mafia is showing up. That would be interesting. <laughs> is, uh, is that is that is that a thing? Yeah. Yes. In Pennsylvania yeah. and that borders that's part of the rust belt. B- barely. Very barely. Very barely. Um, barely very. Yeah, this trailer doesn't give me a whole lot of info on what this show's about. There's like 
vague criminal activity happening. Someone says something about this town. This town's a town, and that's why it's a town. <laughs> People live in these houses <laughs> and engage in commerce. There's a lot of blood here. Must be a murder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is a cop who investigates a murder and says that line, which Did already really gives me that? trouble. That was a line that someone okay. said. That might have been the first line said. I assumed we misheard it. No. That's, a, that's straight up what someone said. All right. Because I judge all murders. I mean, I'm assuming this is how police officers do it. They judge murders based off of how much blood is at the scene. I mean, past a certain point of blood, you gotta assume there's a dead body. A lot of... Hmm, not too much blood here. Couldn't have been a murder. <laughs> they still get a chance. But, uh, yeah, I thought they just rated the quality of the murder based on the blood. Wow! Style rank <laughs> S! Really, a really good murder. High quality. Uh, this yeah, murder could have been better. Do cops, ever, do cops ever rate murders? 3X combo! <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you ask your dad who investigates murders? I don't want to ask him about his job. He doesn't like it. All right, I'm gonna I, I I'm gonna up, up, upload this photo of uh, the poster to you guys for one dollar, just so we can examine this for a sec. Wow. Okay, so let me go. Let me go ahead and describe this. this is yeah, describe for the audience. Yeah. All right, so you, you've got this like the silhouette of the United States, except it's like been. Like it, it's just made out of dollar bills, and then like on the lower half of it, it's like bloody. B- fuck up! That's blood. <laughs> That's gotta be and, blood. And at the very top of of the of America, there's smokestacks because it's a rust belt. Yeah, it's, it's a, bit, a lot of s- symbology going on here. So I assume Stare, that there. Stare, were... would you say this is America? Mm, yeah. Don't catch me slipping. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you wanted me to say, right? Yes. Or black Except, I don't... people get your money. That's what they say in that song, right? I think this image might be implying that there's some kind of political message, but I doubt there is one in this show. I think this is just implying that America's messed up. <laughs> See, like, I, I like think there's something it... wrong with America. I think this. Is... I think it might be, but I, I'm just saying I don't think the show is actually going to make that message. Oh, maybe the show. I don't get that impression. Maybe I think the, the show is going to do a deep dive into like America's class and cultural divide. Hold on, this show is linking blood, industry, and money together. Maybe this is an anarcho-primitivist propaganda <laughs> piece written by Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> I wish it would probably be more interesting of a trailer if that were the case. We should start a campaign to have him released from prison. Nah. <laughs> well, then we could have him on the show. Also, I forgot to mention that it's a one dollar bill, and it shows <laughs> it shows Washington with his hand to his mouth, like. Oh, oh I just noticed. <laughs> oh man, maybe this is tackling the deep state conspiracy. Maybe George Washington's the killer. I bet no one's thought of that. <laughs> All right. So, how mad would you be if you're watching a show? <laughs> and the big reveal at the end was was that George Washington was the killer. Like a bookshelf turns around, revealing a hidden passage, and he steps out. <laughs> yes, that's right. It was me, George Washington, eternal president of these United States and tallest president. He's the tallest. I he was very tall. When I, that's why. I, that's why he was so popular with the ladies. Weird. I've been in power all this time. I just assumed Abraham Lincoln was the tallest president. Oh. Because of that. Because oh, he, he just has a tall hat, Swanson. No, t- it has, the tallest president is Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. At six that's feet, right. four inches. He's taller than all of us. My God. Have we considered that Abraham Lincoln was actually two people stacked on top of each other? I thought about that. Well, then why would he die when he got shot? Well, we, you can't keep up the facade once once the top person dies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if other people are in the conspiracy, you can make it work. You can why, buy has an... no one, why has no one tried that? If the lower half died, it'd be fine, but if the top half dies, like the... <laughs> Just put the top half's face on the bottom half's face. 
That's why John Wilkes Booth was so weirded out when he shot Lincoln because he realized that because he saw two people topple over. <laughs> and it just like just confused him and made him jump down and <laughs> recite some. Well, yeah, the lower half fell down. And he was like, I did not cut this person in half. <laughs> and he had to go investigate. Oh, man. What, yeah. what an impression I got assassinated by getting cut in half. With a That'd sword. That would be very that impressive. Would, that would be front page newspaper <laughs> material. Like, you're just watching it. And a guy runs past with a katana. If they build the statue you're, you're of the watching president. watching what? Like... The State of the Union! Why would they be assassinated during the State of the Union? Of all times. That's when you expected the least. I don't know. I think they expected a lot. Isn't that when they have designated survivors? Yeah. Are we going to watch that when it comes back? No. Oh. Good. I mean, probably not. We'll see what else is on. Anyway. How did they make that show so boring? I don't even get it. I feel like it probably got more interesting after we started No, it didn't from what I heard. Uh, We did watch another show, though. Another CBS All Access show, even. Better Call Saul. That's that's right. (laughs) The trailer for this one is... uh, The trailer is for this show, Tell Me a Story. Which Uh. is... a, uh, a, a, A reimagining of fairy tales, but in like a dark messed up kind of way it's like messing with your mind and telling you a story about like the three little pigs Except sounds interesting right they're not very little they're very tall boys this is a this is a show that seems like an idea that someone had and then they when they were further with it when they were very drunk and like, another okay, okay let's let's make a show where all right so they have a bunch of sex and do a bunch of crime, but they're wearing like like there's a girl with like a real real red riding hood, hood and uh, I'm real uh, I'm really drunk, sorry. And 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 there's, my wife and, just and, left and, me. And, <laughs> and they've got the they've got like these guys robbing a bank, and they got pig masks on because guess what? They're the they're the three little pigs, and and there's gonna be a big reveal. It's gonna be like. Like at the end of the season, there's gonna be a big bad wolf, and he's gonna be he's gonna be coming for the pigs. Also, there's apparently like a Hansel and Gretel thing that I didn't really get from this trailer. Why is there so much sex? If this is CBS, isn't this supposed to be for old people? Well, it's a streaming service, and also uh, I assume they had nothing else to show oh. you that would entice you. So yeah, this... they just put like all the sex they could in the trailer so that people got interested in it. This because it's whenever just I'm watching, waltz, waltz, whenever, fucking. Whenever I'm watching TV, I, I want those like implied sex scenes to happen. <laughs> if I had just shown this trailer to you guys, a purpose of nothing, you would have thought that it was a softcore porn trailer. Can you imagine if they marketed like Breaking Bad this way? What and just showed <laughs> Walt getting sex anal, <laughs> like Walt getting the awkward hand job. Yeah, that would have been interesting. AMC's new show, Breaking Bad. Oh, Walt! <laughs> what if they just the yeah. sh- what if they just showed the time where he like tried to have sex with her and she was like, "Nah." Or, the, or hitting on the principal. Yeah. I think that would have given a very very clear message of what Breaking Bad was, and I would have been really interested in watching it. You know, yeah, you're not this- wrong. Just that trailer. I mean, that principal scene kind of does sum up Walt's character very well. Yeah. What if they had a trailer that featured a scene that was never in the show, and it was just Gus walking out and approaching Walter and gesturing to his cross? And saying, <laughs> he takes off his shirt slowly. And he just gestures to his cross, and he's like, Would you like to suck? <laughs> Would you like to suck? Two, two, yeah, it'd be very confused because it'd be two seasons before he shows up. <laughs> Who is this man and when is he going to get sucked? <laughs> Last time on AMC's Breaking Bad. Yo, Mr. White, he made you suck? <laughs> <laughs> that happens every episode. <laughs> would, Jess, would there be like an arc of Jesse getting jealous? And that would put a rift in their relationship? Why would Jesse be jealous that he didn't? If because anything, it's a Gus drama, Ma- Swanson. 
<laughs> Why didn't he ask me to suck? <laughs> Yo, man, I could suck. I got a good mouth. <laughs> Jesse, man, you don't have to... Why are you so preoccupied with mouth stuff, man? There's more Wait, is that little is that is that Badger or Skinny Pete? <laughs> they put on the Poteri rings. <laughs> so I could do that voice. Skinny Badger. <laughs> anyway, this show uh ha- does have people dress in pig masks. And the way even the way that the trailer does it is like a huh? Get it? Huh? Very tense. Huh? There's a part, there's a scene that lo- it looks to be the most obnoxious, which is a lady is about to leave her house, and her mom is like, "Oh, it looks like it's about to rain. Take this red hood." Ah! Why did you? Huh? Yeah, so what? Huh? What you is the it? deal w- w- with this? It? Is it like a universe where these stories didn't exist, or is it actually actively inspiring them to do this, or is there some kind of supernatural force making them? Yes. Does Red Riding Hood uh, have to wear above. red? Also, they yeah, say like there's a wolf, sure there's died. a wolf out there, and all it is is just a sexy dude. <laughs> it's also he's, he's like, also played. He, <laughs> he's yeah. also played by Jim Carlo Esposito. This is like they're like you gotta watch out. You gotta watch out when you're walking alone at night, lady with red hood, because there's wolves all about. And it just shows a dude, and he's like, I'm sexy. What's up? But also, I might murder people. But yeah, but also maybe I murder people. Let's bone, and they show some bonage. They Not enough. show at least five scenes of bonage. Not enough of like they show sure, they show people taking their shirts off and like getting in the hot tubs. You know where sex happens. You know as they want to do when they get in. Like what else do you do in a hot tub? Lounge? No, you and fuck. Enjoy yourself. Nope, sex only. Might as well call it a sex tub. Fair enough. Well, that would that would just send the wrong idea. No. Actually, guys, let's make our own hot tub and call it a sex tub and sell it. We're going to get rich. Yeah, I bet no one's patented the idea of sex tub. But yeah, I can't wait for them to tell me a story whenever this... Oh, it's uh, set to premiere on October 31st, so... Get ready I can't that. wait to die. Is that is that spooky time of the year? Yeah, I guess that's the thing. This trailer doesn't seem spooky, but then the last, like... 10 seconds they have like a pig dude show up and it's supposed to be real scary i guess yeah for the while it just seems like oh this look at this salacious sex show and then it's like at the end it's like oh look also it's spooky i guess sleep I, tight i guess it's kind of spooky they do like a close-up of like the guy in the pig mask and like there's like a string like the horror string like the din and that's supposed to be scary i guess it is scary i'm scared well, well, we'll we'll have to see how scary it is when we maybe watch this show. I hope we don't have to. Oh yeah, designation. Hopefully, there's a lot of good stuff on the watch, and we don't have to. I get good news, designation. Rip. It looks like they weren't the designated survivors. Ah, uh, designated dead. <laughs> More like designated losers. All right. Uh, so yeah, we we watched all of that, but we also watched something else, something longer, something sort of with an Earthier. average runtime of what would you say, an average runtime of forty eight minutes or so, fifty minutes into the season, maybe. We watched the season premiere of Better Call Saul. Yeah. You know that spinoff of that show that we watched before, the one that we were just talking about. Contact Saul via telephone. That show that everyone loves, but also is in one. Yeah, Better Call Saul, which had its fourth season premiere uh, more than a year after the end of its third season. Took him long enough. Yeah, it did, a lot of time. A lot of time in between the, this episode and the last one. Uh, a lot of time to sit with, you know, how the third season ended. Uh, obviously, if you haven't watched any of the previous seasons, get out. Uh, Go! Yeah, this is your turn. This is your turn. Go! Turn. I hate you. <laughs> Go and watch the show. Go on, get. You gotta leave. I hate you. Go. Otherwise, we're gonna spoil it for you. Uh, but yeah, Chuck is Chuck's a dead boy. He killed himself. He's real dead. <laughs> and he still thinks he was in the right. 
Does he? Yeah, that's... He thinks he's in the right by killing himself? No, he thought he didn't do anything wrong before killing himself. Oh. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is this premiere is uh, a, a heavy episode, you can say. Uh, yes. we get the, the sense of dread throughout this episode is palpable. Especially in the beginning, in the flash Could forward. Open. Yeah, there's Te- some there's there's a lot of stuff going on that's the, the tension speaking, is thick. It's the present. And the show's the flashback. Uh sure. <laughs> yeah. The show will be in black and white then. Well, no, based off of how the first episode went. It is actually the the flashback. We are in the present when we're with Gene. We're living in 2015, Keo. Why is the why is the they're not living have in, less color? They're not living in 2015. Well, it was like 2010 by the time Breaking Bad ended. I think that it's because he lives in Nebraska, Keo. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Basically, this teaser, this little opening intro here is. Uh, Gene goes to the doctors. Uh, the doctors, because he has like a panic attack or something and passes out. Yeah, and the doctors are like, "You all good?" There's a lot of tension building where like he has to verify his driver's license and like the ladies chatting him up and he's trying not to talk to anybody or do anything. And he's just in the cab and the guy's just staring at him and not responding to him. Also, he has an Albuquerque Isotopes <laughs> air freshener. Also, also someone. I was told that that guy in the taxi is a big named act. He's coming back. <laughs> yeah, Saul's gonna die. They're gonna the, kill him. Why would they put just a random dude in the taxi as the big named actor? <laughs> because he's gonna come back. He's probably gonna show up this season in the past. They all, they've only been doing one teaser, one, one present thing a season. So. Yeah, so he's gonna show up in the past in two thousand three, and Saul's gonna be a helping out guy to. Uh, he's gonna. It's gonna be Walter White. Oh no! He's like you yeah, thought. Either he, way, he was. You thought I was, was dead, guys. Like I him. was just sleeping. I got better. I was really tired after being shot. I am the one who drives the cab. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we get to see Jimmy, uh, and then we cut to Jimmy. He's real happy. He's super excited to feed fish and make coffee. That made me wish I had a morning routine. I have a morning routine. It's struggle to get out of bed and then immediately go to the television or computer. <laughs> You're a true TV tuner. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my morning routine is I get up, I go for a half hour jog. Holy shit. I make myself... <laughs> wow, Kia's I mean, so powerful. I make myself a healthy breakfast. I take a nice shower. Maybe. I spend I spend an hour practicing the piano. Wow, why the fuck is Keo on this podcast? And then I wake up from my dream about being productive. Oh, mm. and I roll out of bed and hit my head on the side of my nightstand oh, and I cry man. for ten minutes. I always worry. That's why I don't keep my nightstand by my bed. I got two nights. <laughs> wow, look at this fancy boy over here. Even... Two nightstands. <laughs> Do you have two? Do you have two alarm clocks too? No. Fucking loser. Two lamps. Dweeb. No, just one. Anyway, Jimmy gets the call uh, about Chuck being dead, and uh, yeah. Man, you know, I for I, I've missed this show in the year in the year plus it's been gone. We talked about the tension building that they do, which they do almost better than anything currently on television that I can think of. Actually, probably better than anything on television. I can't think of something that's on TV right now that's better at building tension. How about the news? Hey. No, that just builds depression <laughs> in me. Despondency. Irritation. But yeah, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy is inconsolable. Kim tries her best. She's not really having it. Does she try though? Yes. Okay. What did you and think the whole? Really... <laughs> not really much you can say or do to... with somebody who's that like messed up, really. What did you think the whole scene of her drinking with him was? 
She was thirsty and wanted to yeah. <laughs> grab some liquor. Um, meanwhile, because all of the heavy lifting dramatically is being done by Jimmy this episode, Mike gets to have all the fun. Yeah, and he Mike goes, goes on an adventure. It's pretty great. He just breaks into this place, boy. Yeah, he uh, yeah he breaks into this. Uh, he's getting money from a place that uh, is from Breaking Bad, run by Lydia, uh, who doesn't show up in this episode, but she is in the Good. previously. On. Yeah, uh, he does a tour of this facility after stealing someone's uh, car. He's, uh, I thought he was going to shoot ID. that guy when we saw that guy getting in the car. Why? Like, he was looking at his bag desperately, and I couldn't help but think of that scene in Breaking Bad where Mike was looking for his gun in his bag, but Walt took it and shot him instead. Uh, so, so we're getting a call back to the, a very important scene in, Bre- in Breaking Bad. With a random dude, Mike. <laughs> well, also, I thought that might have been Pie Stomper for a second. They have similar I body types. I don't know types. what that means. You know, the nerdy guy who was uh, selling the prescription pills. His name is Pie Stomper? Yeah, I don't remember his real name to you. No, man, I just thought that was the name that you you knew him by. <laughs> that is the name I know him by. Um. Yeah, so Mike signs like a card... Uh, Stare, you're like a high school bully. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like a person does something, and that's their name now. Look at this dweeb. His <laughs> name. Look at this dweeb. His name's Pie Stomper. <laughs> pie Stomper. Pie Stomper. Yeah. What do you What do you call What do you call Nacho? Uh, drug lord killer. <laughs> Old. Probably like Pill Boy or something. Pill like Boy. That. Pill Boy. <laughs> Stroke Maker. <laughs> no card stealer because he stole the baseball cards and got in trouble that's a cool thing though oh you're right yeah stroke maker isn't cool and Mike Cowboy is, isn't cool and Mike is cop killer <laughs> that's pretty cool I know uh yeah so Mike tours this facility and then like goes to the higher up and is just like hey you your suck. security's fucked yo fix it he really schools them yeah, he's like, listen, uh, you're scared. Your cameras are all out of place. You're... you're not shredding important documents. Your people are not wearing proper equipment. Your foreman kissed me when I asked him to without any. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like yeah, a what plus. Was up, what was up with that scene? Like, why did that kiss go on for a whole minute? And why, it was so <laughs> was wet. Gonna... There was no sound. There was no music whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, all we heard was just wet uh, kissing sounds. Like, most of this is a montage where it's like... But then there was just this scene of him and this other dude, like, moving around throughout this... Yeah. And they were just, like, in a closet, moving around all as things, like, fell around them. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Mike was, like, passionately shoving him around. Yeah. They didn't was... even say anything. Anyways, then we cut back to like season three with Gus and Nacho hanging out. Yeah, hanging and out. Hanging He's out in the parking <laughs> where, where Hector had a stroke. Yeah, Hector is being uh, taken away. Anyways, and... yeah, we learned one key thing. Victor from Breaking Bad. Gus's follow along boys following Nacho. And it seems yeah. like they know that he poisoned him. It's not the only key thing we learn, which is that also. Uh, oh yeah. Gus gives like an ominous warning. That there's gonna be a drug war. Yeah, he's like, hmm, people will come for this territory. Gunshots. I'm all <laughs> for gunshots. Yeah. So what's our percentage chance of Nacho dying? This uh, season. This I mean... season probably like thirty percent. He dies before the end of the show. Who would kill him? Mike. It's not like he could kill anyone. There's no well, one he, really. He for him just to kill almost him. did kill someone. Yeah, but he, I mean, he doesn't have anyone else to kill in this plot line, so he's probably just gonna die. No. I figure Mike probably kills him. I think he just leaves. For, for what? Canada. I mean, I guess he could stay alive when, when, uh, when Walter and Jesse kidnap Saul. He does say Ignacio. Yeah, but Saul wouldn't know what happened to him, so... 
Well, yeah. So like he could he could survive or he could die. He could go either way. Yeah, I don't. It, really it's not as do it's not as doomed as his relationship with Kim. Maybe Nacho will marry Kim. <laughs> oh <laughs> man! <just> leave. <laughs> That's why what you don't see it during Breaking Bad times. I can get behind that story development. Anyways, you know that that DA line means Hank is going to show up. I hope not. What's Dean Norris up to? What's he been doing? Do you actually care? He, I know he was in Under the Dome. Anyway, I don't actually care. My favorite yeah, Dean I... Norris role is when he was in Terminator as the SWAT guy. Wait, is he actually? Yeah, he was the leader of the SWAT guys. I feel like, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember that now. Would you actually mind oh, if he showed up? He's also the SWAT team leader in Gremlins too. Oh boy! <laughs> wow. Lattice I'm surprised Stare hasn't mentioned that he's been in 24. Oh yeah, he was the general guy in season two of 24. He was in an episode of Lost one time. I remember that. <laughs> he was in an episode of Key and Peel, a Mexican drug cartel leader. Ironic. He pro- he played Benjamin Franklin in Sons of Liberty. <laughs> oh, for se- for a second I thought I was reading Sons of Anarchy, and that's why. Why um, are you guys speaking Spanish right now? I don't I don't understand what's going on. Como estas? Y plato de mu- No shit, I forgot what. <laughs> were you gonna say? Were you gonna I'm say gonna mucho? S- I was gonna say silver or lead. I was gonna say silver or lead in Spanish, like how. You know, Pablo Escobar yells a lot, but I forgot. Anyway, um, yeah. No, Keith, but really though, would you would you really mind if Hank showed up? I'd probably be like, uh, okay, uh, I guess this is fine. Is he, he's not going to even accomplish anything in this. I mean, where is this drug story plot line even going? Huh? I guess that's the question, isn't it? Still? I don't think it has anywhere to go. What do you it mean? It has to somehow somehow connect with Jimmy. <laughs> Does it? I mean, like, Omar's adventures in The Wire, like, were completely divorced from everything else for, like, a fair bit. Yeah, but The Wire wasn't called Omar's Badass Times. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I would definitely watch that show. Why is an AMC doing that? What? What, The Wire? (laughs) No, Omar's Badass Adventures. Well, why would AMC do it? (laughs) Because HBO isn't interested. I'm sure they would be if David Simon was like, I'm making a show about Omar. <laughs> a prequel about Omar. It's called it's called it's called, it's called Guess Who's Coming. <laughs> oh my god. But really though, the show has to connect uh crime to Jimmy being a lawyer. That's well, that's he, the whole point. Well yeah, right? it'll eventually happen when he becomes a criminal lawyer. That has to happen in this show, so it's, that's got to be how it connects him, right? Right. Yeah, but, he but also defended criminals in season one, like Nacho and Mike. Yeah, so it's it's pro- it's plausible that it could happen again. Interesting. I guess if you say so. Especially if the DEA were to be involved in something. Also, Hank... he's gonna he's gonna defend Nacho and fail. Nacho also, goes to prison. If you're wondering where the storyline is going, Gus still doesn't have all of his territory that he has at the beginning of Breaking Bad. Anyways, they go to a funeral. Yeah, it's real sad. Yeah, a guy Jimmy, died. Jimmy and Kim go to a funeral. Be clear with <laughs> be a little. <laughs> they go to a funeral. Yeah, and then the camera p- pans and turns to the back, and Gus is standing near the exit and it's just like whoa, whoa there will be a, there whoa. will be a wall <laughs> anyways we um, get to the big scene of this episode where Howard talks to them yeah after the funeral Howard uh tells them that he uh he blames himself for Chuck's death and Jimmy's like yep it was all you uh, that's, yeah that's like the money shot uh that's a big character moment right there yeah, and then he comes all over the fish. <laughs> no, oh, no. But really, that's like a big turning point. Yeah, it's where Jimmy McGill becomes Saul Goodman. Yeah, so we can go now. We don't need the other episodes. Well, well, well yeah, that that could have been the end of the series, really, to be honest. Uh, I mean, that'd be a weird ending, but okay. <laughs> 
I mean, it could, it would be a weird ending, but they could have done it last season, then the show would have been over. Yeah, because, I, I guess. I mean, it literally shows him just, like, blame another guy for his brother dying, and then he just happily feeds fish and smiles. Well, he's taking his brother's last words to him to heart. You know? Which were, when, which were it's been a year Chuck for was us. Like, when Chuck was like, don't bother grieving, you're gonna do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, he really he really took those words to heart. Also, he could just pass his blame off. He could just pass the buck off to someone else in terms of feeling the weight of another person's life. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. This, uh, you know what made me mad about this scene? Now I feel bad for Howard. <laughs> it's all right. He'll probably marry Kim or something. I don't think. I'm glad you don't write for this show, Sarah. <laughs> You'll probably marry Gus. Nice. That <laughs> Gus was that family at home that he kept talking about. I mean, what? how was that family at home Gus kept talking about in Breaking Bad? My husband's a very high performing lawyer. And high performing <laughs> elsewhere. Yeah, how, how, <laughs> Howard is his attorney. That would probably make sense. It never had to come up in Breaking Bad, so... That would not make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, I don't think he does defense. That would probably make sense. It's just like, oh, yeah, I've decided to become a drug lord attorney instead uh, yeah, of being I at do... a very successful firm. Yeah, I don't do lawsuits anymore. I do criminal defense. <laughs> Anyway, the episode ends with uh, with Jimmy to- with Jimmy uh, saying, "Call me Saul Goodman." Yeah, and the, the theme song he, he plays on, again. He, 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 he puts on a colorful suit and does finger guns. Just... Yeah, yeah. And he says, "Here, Saul." And then it and says, it... "Executive producer Vince Gilligan." So, what would you rate it, guys? Uh, the the, episode. I mean, it's a recommend for me if that's what you mean. Four out of ten. Okay. There's no Tuco. Yeah, I don't three think three sad clowns out of three. <laughs> We're never gonna yeah. see Tuco again. How yeah. sad. It's sad, isn't it? Yeah, this uh, this was a good app. I mean, you know, it, it obviously was. A, this is a recommend for me because you know, Better Call Saul is uh, one of my favorites. Yeah, I recommend skipping the first three seasons, just getting straight <laughs> to this yeah. one. Yeah, don't watch anything before. Just watch this episode. You can ju- you can jump right in. It's easy. Yeah, try not to watch Breaking Bad either. Yeah, definitely don't watch Breaking Bad, and definitely don't watch seasons one through three of Better Call Saul. But watch this episode. What would it be like to watch Better Call Saul and then Breaking Bad? I know people who have done that. That's like watching. What's it? What's it like? They they got confused and stopped. Ha. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Walt's arc is completely different from Saul and what you would look by like from one sh- Like, where do they get confused and stop? Uh, Somewhere in season five or season one. I think they knew that it was a better, that it was the spinoff of Breaking Bad, so I don't know why they didn't watch it originally. <sighs> so they stopped, I think, around probably before the the mic thing from episode one from season one i think that i think that i think that'll be interesting once better call saul's completely aired watching them all in chronological order oh uh, yeah like the prequels like the star wars prequels they'll be fun to watch in, in chronological order only you know if the prequels were good yeah they should make uh, a badger and skinny pete spinoff all right so is this a recommend for all of us Yes. Yeah. All right. That sounds like a tune in to Better Call Saul, everybody. Da da. Yeah, that's the that's the noise we make when that happens. Anyway, uh, that's about it for this week's episode. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jesse Swanson. You can find me at Stairmaster Two. I'm at Real Keo Rain, and if you can spell that without looking it up. I'll give you one cent. Whoa. It's probably going to be in the show notes. That's a deal. Uh, yeah, and you can also find the show on Twitter at TV Tuners. You can comment and talk to us there. 
You can also use the hashtag TV tuners, and we'll look up uh, the things you say, and maybe we'll like them. Or maybe we won't. Kill or read them out loud, expassorated, Lee. Expassorated. Yeah, yeah. expassorated. Kind of like me hearing Stare try to pronounce that word. <laughs> Apropos. Please help me. Help me to speak. Help. Right, I'll get you a speech therapist, buddy. Don't worry. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you can also find the podcast uh, with our email. If you want to email us your clips or comments, questions, any concerns, any complaints. If you want to yell up Stairmaster, that's the best place to do it. Our email, is, our email is tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. What's that email, Keo? Email... Eight yeah, seven seven it? nine four five six. The the TV tuner podcast at the gmail dot net dot net. That's right. And uh, we'll be back next week with more television goodness. Until then, keep watching. Keep Bye. your eyeballs open. Do not Bye-bye. Adjust your set. It's over. I found him. I don't have anything to say.